Chops Garage is proud to be sponsored by Car Vertical, the largest online database of vehicle information. Use the link in the description down below to find the true history of your vehicle or one you're about to buy. So day later, the Moores boys have got the engine into the RAV4. Uh, they say it's running really nicely, but it's out of MOT now. It's past the 10 days for the retest, so it's got to go back in for that now. And then they'll do a proper road test on it. But apparently, this engine's starting really nicely. It was a bit longer than hoped because I needed a lot of parts needed swapping over because there were some minor differences. Um, and they wanted to swap all the best bits over to the other engine. So I think we are two days labour into this. So it's not going to be a cheap job. Right, we've got the Ignis Sport back. I'm taking that back. I've just dropped off the Kia for its MOT. We've got the catalytic converter. We had to do the cat on this as well, on the Sport, which is why I did, another reason I didn't do the tyres, because uh, they're only advisory. But we had to do a cat. Now I'm hoping this cat is worth enough to cover the cost of the new cat, fingers crossed, but we'll find out when we get back. Anyway, let's see if this is as much fun as I remember it being. Well, one quick thing, in the last video, I was showing you how great the Top Don uh, JS2000 jump pack was and told you what a great Christmas present it might be and said there was a discount code for you and then forgot to give you the code. <laughs> it is a decent discount as well. So this is normally um, £89. They're doing a discount code so you pay £70.49 pence for it. So decent, decent discount. So I will put a link in the description this time. So look in the video description down below. There'll be a link for it. Uh, and I'll also pin it in the comments. But yeah, if you know someone or you're playing around with cars yourself, you need to have a decent jump pack and this is cracking. I got back from picking up the Ignis just as Adrian's turned up. How are you feeling today, Adrian? Have you got over your horrible journey the other day yet? Not yet, no. Because you haven't got a Tuareg back yet, have you? <laughs> People think I was faking it with the coupe, saying I didn't have the paperwork for it to have know any of its history, but it's still in the Tuareg up in Bristol. Bristol. Right, there we go. So there you go, guys, not fake. Uh, so we've got the Freelander from those two purchases the other day. He's just dropping that off. And um, yeah. Then we've got to go and I've got, he's going to drop me off to get the Discovery back. I'm sorry, I'm, I mean, I'm working out what I've got on today. I've got so much on today. We are getting very full, as you can see. The, uh, and I haven't covered some of the cars that are here yet either, have I? So we've got a few on their way out the door, but I have got probably, I think in the region of 30 cars at the moment, I think I've only got three or four up for sale. I really need to pull my finger out today, get some photographs done and get some cars up for sale. And you are going to see quite a bit of trading because I need to just trade a load of cars out because I haven't got time to do anything with them. So, uh, yeah, December, I don't want to be too stressful. So I'm going to have to trade some cars out. But anyway, let's get that Freelander unloaded. So I still haven't flipping finished photographing the, uh, the Mint Octavia yet. Or this I've had for a while now, haven't I? I haven't even had time to wash it and get it photographed. I really need to pull my finger out. I haven't advertised the S2000. Oh my goodness. Right, anyway, let's go and get this Discovery. So back with the Discovery. I can understand why people do buy these. That does drive really nicely. It's such a relaxing, comfy drive. Um, obviously with all the work done on that one, it's particularly nice driving. Here's that invoice, by the way, for the Discovery. So it was only done on the 15th of the, se of the 7th, 2022. That engine replacement by Land Rover, under warranty. Look at it. It goes 7,333 there, but it does go on for a couple more pages. Every gasket, seal, O-ring, injectors, absolutely everything. A load of other services as well. Um, so yeah, mental. So yeah, we've got to get that one cleaned up and up for sale. So I've had a call from Moores regarding the Rio we dropped off this morning. So the MOT on it, the oil leak. And it was mentioned on the last MOT, we found is just the actual oil filter. So we're going to do a service anyway. That will solve that. Other things that came up, front pads were worn down to next to nothing. So we can do front pads on it. He said it wasn't an MOT thing. It wouldn't necessarily have failed it, but he said the rear um, brakes he didn't think were great. They needed servicing, so we're going to service those. It needed a tyre, it was an advisory for a tyre, so we could get away without replacing it. Um, but you know my cars go out advisory free. Well, with the exception of that one, because I'm not really sure I'm putting that up for sale. That might just stay in my collection. Um, and he did say also that he thought the squealing belt might be the fact the actual battery's a bit rubbish because the um, battery failed on the MOT. So potentially we're in for a battery, a tyre, a set of pads, 
a service on the rear we're in for the oil filter service so the car cost us two I'm saying we're going to be at least a couple of hundred pound into that at 22 with the potential sale price of it's going to have to go up at 2995 with an advisory free MOT now this is the thing this is the thing people want the cars as cheap as they can so realistically you could probably go and pick one up for two and a half so I could have done things like left the rear brakes because they weren't failing the MOT, left the tyre because it's just an advisory, I could have not serviced it. That would have saved me probably in the region of, well, that would probably save me in the region of a couple of hundred to be actually, so probably the bill's going to be more than a couple of hundred. Also I'm pointing the Freelander because I haven't actually got here the Rio to point it at. So this is the point with those cheap cars is if... You, you can't have your cake and eat it. You can't have people go into the comments and go, go and buy your car privately. You're going to, you know, save yourself a load of money, this, that, and the other. And they go off and they buy cars that don't even have a new MOT on them or they have an MOT on them. And they go, well, I did have to get a few bits done afterwards and forget to add all those up. And obviously that car will still be going out with a warranty. If, yeah, I mean, we're going to make maybe 300 quid on the Rio, I would have thought, if we're lucky. But I could have made more by just simply doing less to the car. So, again, this is just something to bear in mind when you're out there negotiating on deals. Oh, we'll, we'll get a video out on that. I'm just, I promise you we'll get a video out on that. Anyway, so we are now, what, coming up one o'clock in the afternoon. And today I was absolutely going to get loads of cars photographed and put up for sale. But you can see that half the day is gone already. Now, my deal with this unit is that I have two rows of cars. I've never got to a point of using two rows yet. Now, I know I can budge a lot of this up, tighten it all up a bit, and um, get cars in. But I'm obviously now getting to a point where I'm overstocked. Plus, I don't like to have cars outside when they're prepped. So, news on what... So, I said I was going to trade stuff out. So, news... I've traded out the Alpha. Now, I was, I'm taking a bit of a hit on the Alpha. I was going to get the number plate off to get it um, to bring some money back in because obviously my initials are JH. So it's kind of close to a trade plate, but I've not had enough time to do that. So I've got to give that pull off and give that, pull that out and give that a clean off today. And um, also, I have traded out the Picasso, like I said I would. So that's going up to Mad Mike. So that's freeing up two spaces. The Jag I'm getting out of, I'm putting up for 2995 So that'll be kind of like a break-even deal on me. I help Mike out by taking it back again. I've had a bit of fun out of it with the known faults. Like I said, this car's probably, I think, Auto Trader says it's about five grand. So at 2995 I've left two grand for people to either sort stuff if they want to or leave them. You know, I use it every day, live with it. You really want to try and sort out why you've got that bit of exhausty smell when you start it up. It's got to be a pipe or something, I imagine. But other than that, I wouldn't do anything. I honestly wouldn't do anything with it. I'd just drive it as it is. It does actually clean up really well. Again, there's another car I've got dirty and then parked up. So I just need to have a clear out. So that'll go. I'd like to keep the small stuff. I'd like to keep the Ignis, the uh, Suzuki Swift, obviously the... The little Chevy Spark's going to be a good retail car. The Peugeot we're not going to make any money out of, but it could be a good seller. The Cougar needs to go down and get this DPF thing sorted out because I haven't got time to get onto that myself. A lot of you have been asking about the 155 in the corner. That's not my car. That is um, somebody I know of from the Alfa Regazzi days who needed some storage space for the car. Unfortunately, it's um, been down to Moors and the chassis legs are rotten on it. It needs new chassis legs and it needs, needs some welding in the floor pans as well. So I have messaged the customer and said, look, it is outside and it's not under cover. You hope you're aware of that. I think they said they're gonna send me a cover down, but real shame because it was being used as a daily driver and it's actually quite a nice car, but I took it off the road to get it resprayed and then it went in for an MOT after the respray and they said, um, sorry, <laughs> on the side of the car's rotten. There we go. So yeah, be shame to the old Alpha go. That was been, again, I've been using it, you know, a lot and just not hammering it. And the, the, the guy, the dealer that's having it, he's got enough margin to fix it all up and uh, make a profit out of it. Hopefully, I mean, like I say, we never actually established what the problem with it was, but I guess worst case, it's put a turbo on isn't it? Put a used turbo on it. There's a few other odds and sods, which I've explained to him, like it needs the wiring loom doing up here. You put a connection, um, you get them on eBay, splicing a little connection there because the wiper's not parking where it should do. Um, other than that, it's, obviously it needs the paint side of things, doing the lacquer peel on the bonnet. But again, it would have been a light car I'd like to keep because I really love Alphas and I do love anything with red, black and red stitching inside. But yeah, it's got to go. So I've got to get that cleaned up now. So that's probably it for the video. I've probably rambled on enough. And it's, 
such a lot been going on in it but i guess the question is to leave things with comment down below do we think i've bitten off more than i can chew or do you think oh, i should just carry on buying cars if they're the right price i think all of these cars have been bought at the right price um i still could have fixed the alpha and probably made a bit of profit out of it um i obviously made a bit of profit out of the jag already but i could do the fixes on it and make a bit more profit out of it but to be honest i think that could be a nightmare um yeah i could have made a few quid out of the picasso but everybody warming that would be more of a headache so just making a very a drink out of that and it might allow me to even get onto the micro but yeah what do we think guys am i biting off more than i chew or if i'm getting cars at the right price should i just carry on buying them anyway let's try and get some photographs of the cars done and actually get something up for sale <laughs> as always thanks for watching guys if you have enjoyed the video please give it a thumbs up down below because that's the biggest metric for helping the channel grow. The algorithm on YouTube will then recommend a video out to other people. And we are trying to hit 40,000 subscribers. I don't think we're very far off at all at the moment. I'd like to get it done before Christmas. So if you can you just check for me, do me a favor, check below. Are you subscribed? Because lots of people think they are and they're not. Remember, it doesn't cost you any money at all. It just means that you get notifications when the new videos come out and you're able to hit the subscription button on the left hand side and it'll automatically come up with the channels you're, you're subscribed to so you won't miss anything. Anyway, as always, as I said, thanks for all the support. Thanks for all the comments. I will try and get through and answer them all. Um, and I'll see you again soon.